Hello, everybody. This is Apologetics with RJ. How are you? As you may know, I have been doing these for quite some time now. Sometimes on and off, depending upon how busy things get around here. Um, I want to thank all of you who have subscribed to my YouTube channel. I'm most grateful because obviously it helps help strengthen people everywhere. I mean, YouTube is, a, is global, you know, it's universal, like the Catholic Church almost, it's global. Um, but what are we gonna talk about today? Well, to whom shall we go? Or to whom shall you go? You know, um, Jesus Christ answered or Actually, Peter, St. Peter asked Jesus Christ, answer Jesus Christ. I can't talk today. This question, to whom shall we go? And then he went on to say, you have the words of everlasting life. You, you, meaning him alone, nobody else. So, my whole topic today is going to be a little more substantial. Hopefully, I'll get into the thorns and the weeds a little. <laughs> Maybe I'll get you guys interested even. <laughs> but um, why do Catholics leave the Catholic Church? That's what we're going to talk about today. You know, some claim on my forum they leave because of doctrine. I don't think so. There are many that do, but there are also very few that, there are many that don't, you know. Um, there are some that leave because of the sins of priests. You know, there are priests that do really stupid and rotten things. Really, they do. In 2006, let me give you a little story before I go on. I love stories. I'm sure you do, too. My grandmother was dying. I asked a priest of our parish if he could go to the hospital across the street. He didn't have to travel far. Across the street and give her the last rites or give her, you know, give her the whole home run, so to speak, before she enters into glory. And then I found out he didn't go. And I was pissed. I'll say it like it is. I was. And I said I had a few choice words for him. Oh yeah, over the phone. I did. Yeah. I mean, I, I went all the way to the the cardinal. And I, you know, I made a lot of steam over it. I she did a, she did end up getting it through a a good uh, priest friend of mine, but you know, someone that I just well, what priests don't I have friends of? Um, but she did. I'm grateful. And, you know, my question, my basic premise here is that um, there will be a time when you're not going to be satisfied with the results or responses of priests, bishops. You may even want to hate them. Believe me, I... You only saw my Twitter account. Um, I think the thing we need to realize and focus is that our main objective is Jesus Christ, right? Now, yes, I know many of you will say, well, you know, I can find Jesus Christ in the Mormon church. I can find Jesus Christ in the Jehovah's Witnesses. I can find Jesus Christ in the Baptists, the Presbyterians, the, um, I don't know who else, um, Lutherans, the ELCA, the LCA, the ILCA. Just go down the list, you know. Wherever you are, you can find anyone anywhere you want. 
You can find Jesus in all those places, really, you could. But you're not going to find the fullness, the completion of faith. And I can tell you why. And I'm not going to regurgitate to some people, but I'm sure I'm going to have to. Um, in Matthew 16, it's very obvious why. Please read it. And think about what you're reading, not just, whew, I'm going to read it and I'm just going to let it go. <laughs> you know, I mean, just read it. Jesus is talking to uh, a group of apostles. And he's uh, on a hill called Caesarea Philippi. Massive foundation. Massive. And I know that some of you apologists have heard it. And some of you folks have, have not. Well, Caesarea Philippi in Jerusalem, in, in Israel, is a very huge, massive, I don't know if it's a quarter mile long or diameter. I, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty substantial. Well, Jesus took his apostles there, and he wanted to discuss something with them. And he asked them a simple question, simple question, very simple. Who do you say that I am? I mean, you know, I asked you that question. I hope that you knew. My name's Robert. I'm, you know, I'm from Earth. <laughs> um, so who do you say, you know? So he's he's talking to them, and you know they're all coming. They're they're nervous. They're what am I going to say? You know, I mean, Jesus is Jesus, right? Well, that's not the answer. Some people do say Jesus is Jesus. Some people say Jesus is only a man. They don't believe he's a divine man. Remember, divine and man. That's why he called himself the Son of Man, because he was born of the flesh. But he was also born of the Spirit. Let's look at Luke. What does Luke have to say? What does Luke have to say? Luke says very clearly and quaintly. After Mary says yes to Angel Gabriel that she was going to bear a son, what does the angel tell her? The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. That is when Mary conceived of God. Some people will just say, well, he's just the son. You know, Mary's, you know, Mary's just the son of Jesus the man, you know, Jesus the I'm not getting into that, but that, that's one doctrinal point that you can find in my podcast on, um, called, um, I believe it's called um, Theotokos. That's the title of, of Mary. It's given in, the, in one of the ecumenical councils. Um, I believe it's the... Um, Gosh, I can't think of it at the moment. Um, so well, let, let's get back again to Matthew 16. So we have, we have, you know, the apostles, you know, kind of bewildered. You know, why is Jesus asking us this kind of question? Um, and there's, you know, their answers are, you know, well, you're John the, some, you know, they're not going to say you are. They're not going to say that. They're going to say some say you are the John, you know, John the Baptist or one of the prophets or Isaiah or, you, you know, or Elisha, Elijah, whoever, you know. But then Jesus kind of looks at them a little more carefully and gives a specific question. Jesus wants a real answer. <laughs> That's why he's asking a specific question. But who do you say that I am? The apostles are probably just like, what am I going to say now? 
I'm really in trouble, aren't I? Well, Peter uh, seems very, uh, <coughs> not really that elusive, but he says, um, you are the son of the living God. And Jesus goes on to say, and I may be paraphrasing, blessed are you, son of, Simon, son of John, for no one has resisted. For no one has revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father in heaven. That was the first infallible statement. You know, some of you don't, some of you have a problem with the doctrine of infallibility. That was Peter's first infallible statement. See, you can't, you can't just say, you know, a Pope can't, I'm going to go, I'm going to intervene here and say, you know, Peter could, can't just say something and people are just going to, up and jump, you know, you know he's going to say jump, and they're going to say how high. It doesn't happen that way. Popes don't do that, and if they did, well, schmuck Farley, too bad. That kind of listen to someone who's just going to say something off the cuff that is thirty thousand feet up in the air, doesn't know what he's talking about. He knows, uh, you know, some some popes know uh, science like. Like they know their theology very, very badly. So, let you know, I'm not here to, you know, discuss certain elements of papal teachings, but I wanted to discuss with you about, you know, just continue to elaborate the fact that a pope has to make an infallible statement when he is teaching to the whole church. He's got to have that intent, okay? It has to be an existing teaching, okay? In other words, it has to have been believed. It has to be a doctrine. It can't be just something I just made up or something. Well, it's my opinion. You know, it's my opinion that the sky is a million years old. Or it's my opinion that People shouldn't be building walls. The Vatican has a huge wall, by the way. But anyway, well, as I was saying, it's the way it is, okay? You know, the Pope is not infallible every time he says something. You can go on, on my podcast on YouTube and look that up yourself, too. I have, on the papacy, I have number one and number two. Again, I'm amateur. I'm not perfect, so if and besides, I started these uh, relatively recently, probably like maybe mid last year. So give me some uh, patience until I get really, really riled up here. Let's get back to the apostles and listen to what Jesus then had to say. So he's talking to them. And well, you know, now he's talking to Peter. He's having a conversation with him, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Singularly. You know, one-on-one, -on -one. like the angel Gabriel had with Mary, so is Jesus having with Peter. Then Jesus goes on to say to Peter, to you I will give. You is singular, by the way, folks. Look it up in Greek. It's singular. To you, I, not me in a person, but I, Jesus Christ, will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Wow. That's like me giving you the keys to my Lexus. Can you imagine that? I think you'd be pretty excited, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, okay. All right. So moving along. along. Peter's excited now. He's got the keys. Urgh, you know. Um, well, what next? Peter's wondering what's going on. I got the keys now. I got it all, right? Then Jesus says, then Jesus says, okay, Peter, but he says, continues on this talk. He says, the gates of hell 
will not prevail against it, the church. Now, now guys, don't, don't go in the, into the weeds now. The gates of hell. Do you all know what hell is in, in, this, in this sentence? It's the fires of Gehenna. That's when that's where the the demonic lives. That's their home. Now imagine what Jesus is saying now. The gates of this demonic place will not prevail against the church. That doesn't mean they won't try. Just because I say to you, I'm not going to prevail against this person who's who I'm in a fight with in a you know at a bowling alley because this guy's a professional but I'm going to try you know well the devil is going to try he's going to try he's going to try to score points against the church how do you think he's going to do it think about it how do you think you do it you try to throw strikes, right? If you're in a bowling alley against this professional. That's the only way you probably, <laughs> if you probably get 10 strikes, you probably win. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe the guy can get more than that in the next game. Maybe he can do two sets of 10, huh? 10 strikes. But the devil will try. Jesus is telling you that. Catholics, Jesus is telling you that the devil is going to try to get to you. And how is he going to do it? Well, currently we really have a very bad priestly pedophilia crisis. I don't think I have to remind people what that means. We have a very... Well, I'll put it gently, a very confused hierarchy. Cardinals, bishops, priests, whoever. That's just a fact. It is. I mean, really. That's why I again I again I keep asking you to reach out, go to Amazon.com and get this book. The Catechism of the Catholic Church. It's not expensive. It's only about what seven ninety five. I think that's worth. I think that's worth a lot if you read it inside. It's got everything, but don't just stop there. Keep reading your Bible, but don't read your Bible out of context. Read the Gospels first. Find out what Jesus has to say. Then go and find out what Paul has to say. Because the only way you can understand Paul, and I wrote, I, I, you know, I sp spoke about this before, is by hearing Jesus. Jesus speaks plainly; doesn't confuse anybody. Jesus is probably the most easiest to understand in the whole Bible. Seriously. So let's go down the list. All right, we have. All these different issues that Catholics bring up because they need to leave the church. They need to leave the church because, you know, Father said this and Father said that. And I went to confession and he said this and he said that. And I have to say 10 rosaries and blah, 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 blah. Well, I say to you, blah, 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 blah. I'm kidding, all right? We're, we all get, it's true. Hey, very, very factual that we all get upset. It's someone in the clergy. We need to pray for them too. You know, we, we forget that sometimes. We forget that we need to pray for our clergy members. They need prayers probably more, sometimes in more cases than we do. Um, I'm going to go jumping back and forth from story to Bible. 
so here we have Peter in Matthew 16, 18, you know, whatever. He's got all this authority. Jesus is saying the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. That doesn't mean they're not going to try. That doesn't mean there aren't going to be in the Middle Ages having sex with other women. Yeah, Borgia Popes did. Mm -hmm. It was, I, I folks, if you think today's bad, go back a notch, okay? Really? Go back to the 14th, 15th, 16th centuries, if you think today's bad. Jesus said, and he promised, the gates of hell will try but they will not prevail against it, the church. Jesus is going to come back for the last pope and retrieve his, his, what, his keys, okay? The pope is only a prime minister. Read Isaiah 22. I know it's a very familiar verse to a lot of, apologists as well but it's it's where jesus gets the whole thing about the keys um and the power and authority we have to have it folks whether for good or for ill we have to have authority in the church jesus gave the apostles the authority to go out and take you know with, you know, re remove evil spirits from people. That doesn't mean the apostles got it all together. In fact, I think, what, John and James wanted to firebomb or nuclearize one of the towns that didn't want to listen to them. They were pretty upset. And Jesus kind of, I'm sure he chuckled. He had to have chuckled. He said, it'll be, it'll be harder for them during the time, the last time, and it will be for the towns in the Old Testament that um, did some pretty evil, evil things. Um, so, you know, the apostles weren't, you know, saints. They were saints in making. We are hopefully saints in the making. Now, why, why, why can't I leave the Catholic Church and go to the Lutheran Church? Because they look the same. Priests dress, I mean, the ministers, priests, who cares if you'll say. They all dress the same way. Well, let me tell you, let me give you one reason why. I know some of my Lutheran friends might not like it, but I think they'll like me for my faithfulness to truth and my faithfulness to being honest. Lutheranism, Luther, Martin Luther, left the Catholic Church. He didn't want to, but he left it because he saw some abuses, lots of abuses. Yes, okay, lots of abuses. I see lots of abuses today. Am I leaving the church? No. I mean, it's one thing to shout and to promote clarity. It's another thing to shout and promote confusion. So, let's go back to Scripture again. I'm not good at verses, so that's why I don't have a Bible in front of me. But I'm quoting, I'm reading, to, I'm basically telling you what the Scripture stories are. So, a few verses down, Peter's acting a little cocky. Yeah, well, he's got his new found keys to the Lexus. 
He wants to start to, you know, prop up those engines, you know. But then Jesus, he, he says to Jesus, basically, one son, he says, you know, because Jesus is saying, I have to go to Jerusalem. Jesus is planning on going there to die there. In fact, we're going to be celebrating, going through that Holy Week next week of the Via Dolorosa. That's the road to Calvary. I hope I'm right. <laughs> um, so, Peter is tapping Jesus on the shoulder. Master, you don't have to go to Jerusalem. Come on. We can stay here. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but you can look it up. It's Matthew 16, I believe, 19 to 22, something in that range. I'm sorry. I wish I was a good Baptist. I just am not. But so anyway, um, what does Jesus say? He looks at Peter and says, get behind me, you Satan. So on one hand, Jesus is giving Peter everything. He's giving him the keys to the, you know, <laughs> to heaven and earth. Whatever you bind on earth will be confirmed in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In other words, freed up, you know. And then Jesus calls him Satan. Because Satan entered Peter as well. Remember, he, Satan enters Judas. Satan entered Peter. Who is Satan going to attack the most? Folks, think about it. He's going to attack the central figure. The pastor. Whether it's the local church. The archdiocesan. Archdiocesan. Cardinalate, the cardinal, the bishop. That's the one you want to attack. Think about it. You know, when uh, there was the Iraq War in 2003, what were we planning on attacking first? Communication basis. Actually, yeah, that was Afghanistan and Iraq. We went to Iraq after. So, yeah, so, you know, these people won't talk to each other. They can't talk to each other. Then how, you know, you could easily blow them up and get rid of them and all that other stuff. Well, the devil wants to go after the communicators of the gospel. They want to go after the bishops, the priests. They're the ones that communicate Jesus Christ and the teachings of the Catholic Church to you. How are they going to do that if Satan enters into them and starts blowing things up within them, in their souls, in their minds, in their teachings, in their hearts? What if he enters this Vatican? What if he, you know, taps the shoulder of, you know, the one in the office today? Doesn't mean he's illegitimate. Come on, you guys. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about sin. Sin. We all sin. So, Peter continues to shut up. <laughs> I mean, Jesus calls him Satan. You got to shut up now. So, he basically clams up, walks out, you know, goes with Jesus, with the apostles, and they go to Jerusalem. We all know the story after that. That's not everything that I wanted to talk about. But basically, you get my point, all right? It's right there. Jesus is giving you the example, staring you in the face. Get behind me, you Satan. He calls the Pope that. Can you imagine someone calling? <laughs> Can you imagine in, at the Vatican, someone standing up and calling Pope Francis? Get behind me, you Satan. <laughs> That's what Jesus did. 
He did that to Peter. Who was Peter? The first pope. So, folks, friends, let's get our act together a little bit. Let's, let's kind of lower the temperature a little bit. You know, um, there are many other reasons why people leave the Catholic Church. There are, you know, priests haven't done a certain thing that they needed, that people needed done. Like I told you about my grandmother. You know, she was dying, and this priest did not go to give her the last rites. Now, how do you think I would be here right now today talking to you about the Catholic Church and in defense of it if I thought that was a reason to leave? Well, let's take a look at all this pedophilia, suppose, you know, well, not supposedly, truly. Do you got do you folks realize that this sin is committed all across the board? Aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, sisters, brothers, other churches. Go to www.reformation.com. Go there. Go there right now www.reformation.com Look at all those ecclesial communities from the Baptists to the Lutherans to the Presbyterians to, I mean, all of them going through all the same stuff. So to whom will you go? If they're all doing the same thing, if they all have sin, who are you going to go to? If they're committing the same sin that our priests are committing, to whom are you going to go? Where? Where else is there to go but Jesus Christ? To whom shall you go? I know where I'm going to stay. Because see, when I go to Mass, let me give you this scenario here. When I go to Mass on Sunday, when I, you know, if I receive communion, sick or something or whatever, just I'm going to Jesus. I'm not going to a man. I'm not going to a priest. The priest is celebrating. Or actually, I think they call it con celebrating. That means they're really lifting up. Now, when they raise that bread, Understand, man and woman of God, when they're lifting that piece of bread and uttering the words, this is my body, this is my blood, it instantly is by the power of the Holy Spirit that comes upon those gifts of bread and wine. It is the spirit that, remember what Jesus said? I know some of Calvinists really have this backwards, upside, downside, sideways, fourth ways, all, all over the place. When Jesus says at the end of John 6, it is the spirit that gives life, the flesh is of no avail. Why would he be saying that after thousands of Jewish believers? would leave him. Wouldn't that be a stupid, stupid place to say it? Why do you think he said that? Well, maybe because that's not what he really meant, is what you're, you know, what some think. Remember, the Jews already believed in a symbolic meal. Even today, the Passover, that's symbolic. Shouldn't be a problem believing in something symbolic or even more symbolic. What Jesus was talking is about receiving the good news in the spirit, not naturally in the flesh. If I go to Mass on Sunday, and I'm looking at that host being raised up, 
And I'm thinking to myself, well, hmm. Okay. Well, it looks like bread. It must taste like bread. Maybe it is maybe it is really bread. Maybe it's just all not true. Now, the doc now that's a doctrinal objection for me to leave the Catholic Church. But if we go back to the early church, you know, Ignatius of Antioch, Irenaeus, all those folks, they teach it's really, it's the real deal. The flesh, I, the bread, I'm sorry, excuse me, Jesus says, the bread I will give. Now, if it's symbolic, if Jesus is speaking symbolically, why isn't he saying the bread I give? is my flesh why not why wait why not just give it away now i mean it's symbol the bread i give no he says the bread i will give is that means in the present moment this is what it's going to be it's my flesh the bread i will give is my flesh for the life of the world now think about it for a moment what symbol has ever given life to anyone devotional a booklet if i were to tear this up i wouldn't commit a sin Oh, that it, I just wouldn't. It's impossible. This is only a symbol. A symbol of a man who's already in heaven. This is, by the way, and let me introduce you to Saint Padre Pio of Pietrelcina, Italy. He's my friend. I pray to him regularly. Yes, I know. I pray to him. By the way, if you listen to my prayer and worship podcast on YouTube, you'll understand what prayer means. There are many different devotions. This is see. This is what this is what you're going to be missing when you join other churches. You're going to miss all these. You know, a prayer to Jesus. Wow, isn't that cool? You're gonna you're gonna be missing uh, devotions like um, prayer after communion. What communion? What communion are you gonna have when you go to Good Book Church? The communion they tell you you're gonna have. That's what you're gonna have. Um, well, let's go on to the next uh, objection. There used to have been a really good priest, and now there isn't in my parish. They keep changing these priests all the time. I hate it. And the priest that's here today, the one that left, was great. The one that's in today, he's just horrible. I gotta leave this church. It's no good anymore. It doesn't preach the word. It doesn't feed me. You know that word fed? I'm not getting fed. You know why you're not getting fed? Because you're not reading this. And you're not reading this. That's why you're not getting fed. Okay, so stop that malarkey. Any one of you getting fed. You know how I get fed? I go to church and receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ. I know it's him. That's why I'm speaking to you today. After all that I've gone through, all of it, and that's, it. you know, I mean, I told you the story about my grandmother. Think about it. You know, that's a, that's a rough time to go through. 
You know what a priest is not going to do something so simple as to pass on the sacraments that help a person get to heaven at the last moment of their breaths or for their breath. Can you imagine the pain, the brutal sorrow that I felt, the hatred that I felt, the words that I spewed against that priest? You don't want to know. Yeah, this guy right here. I had a lot of pain inflicted on me because I, I love my grandmother deeply. Took me a while to realize this is just, you know, Jesus doesn't want me to hate anybody. I forgave him. And so must you forgive those priests or bishops or even popes. Well, right now we just have one, so I guess the shoe wear, fits, right? But anyway, <clears throat> folks, let's get let's get back to our faith. You know why we you know why we received you know we didn't receive this catechism of the Catholic Church again over six hundred I don't know thousand pages I'm not even I think it's over 600 pages. We didn't receive it by chance. It didn't just drop from the sky like the Bible did. By the way, this isn't the Bible. This is um, all the teaching that you'll ever need to understand who Jesus Christ is. Honestly. First New Catholic Catechism of the Catholic Church in more than 400 years. Well, 450 now. Well, no. Yeah, 400 years. Okay. Because it, I think it took a little longer than the Ecumenical Council of Trent to... This is an awesome book. Awesome. Very simple to read. Don't let any bishop tell you otherwise. There are some that will. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that book says it's written to my confreres. This is St. John Paul. The second, the great talking to my fellow bishops and to my, to, and to all the people of God, something like that. So don't let anyone sway you and tell you something that's not true. If you don't, if you have a difficulty with something, I don't care what it is, any teaching at all, write down on the post below. Ask me a question. Give it to me. By the way, I know you're liking a lot of this. I see a lot of people here. Thank you, Matthew, John Beeler, Paul, Suman. Stephen and Andrew, Robert Bellow, Diana Hauser, Kim, Jim, sorry, Jim, <laughs> Kaler, <laughs> I believe, um, Richard Reed, <laughs> um, Lori, let's see, Mike Stapleton, Lizelle, Kim, Patricia Slope, how you doing, Patty? Hey, Tricia, there you go, she's there. Esther, Michael, okay, all right. Nobody's there, but um, nice to see y'all. So why are we abstaining when we have Saint Raphael to pray to for a certain reason? When we have Saint Benedict, I don't even have him around. It's terrible. To protect us from evil. Oh, yeah, I do, actually. I have them on my rosary beads. Say, Benedict, don't, don't leave home without him, okay? Honestly, he will. This is, let me, let me tell you something. This, by the way, this metal, I got him upside down, I think. This medal of St. Benedict, I think you can see him a little bit. 
It's it's a centerpiece, but it's a metal of Saint Benedict. That is what exorcists use to exorcise demons. There are over 400 exorcists in Italy alone. Alone. I, be I believe that may be wrong even. The devil's not, the devil doesn't sleep. The devil doesn't sleep. My friends, when Jesus said, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. He didn't say they won't try. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. They have tried will continue to try and are trying and what are we going to do about it are we just going to leave leave where where are you going to leave you're going to join the mormon church started in 1800 because someone says an angel came down with a couple of stones that they can't find today A manuscript that doesn't exist? Come on, wake up. Wake up. The sins that the any any priest commits is committed in the Mormon church as well. And then the Jehovah's Witnesses Church. And in the Baptist Church, Presbyterian Church, Lutheran Church, all churches. ELCA, I can't say because you know what? They're so small. I don't even know how many. I, I don't think they can fit enough members. I think they can fit enough members in the church. I'm being honest. I don't know how big they are. I don't think they're that big. But you take a. I give them two. I give them 500 years. I'll give, let's see. I give them 30 more years. And we'll see where they're going to be. I mean, I look. I mean, it's, if if since 1969 we can see the Lutheran Church split off, or actually, I think there's either the Wisconsin Synod or the ELCA. When there's a fissure in a church, that means one can't receive the communion of the other. That's how you can know when you're in one of those churches that you can't go to another one, even though they have a name tied to it mind-blowing huh confusing you think that's confusing leaving the catholic church is more confusing than staying in it because in it you can pick up a book you can go to any catholic church all over the world italy poland latvia ukraine russia even Poland, Germany, Ireland, Spain, Iceland, America, of course, we're here, Australia, New Zealand, all the seven continents. And you're going to be able to hear the same scripture reading. same bishop and priest that is connected to the apostles in other words has a direct line of succession that's that's pretty powerful you know what that is the reason to stay in the catholic church because i know i can be self-assured that when i'm receiving that eucharistic host at mass it's coming from Jesus' hands himself because Jesus gave it to his apostles who gave it to, who ordained the elders. Look at Acts 15. Who was with the apostles during that council of Jerusalem? The bishops. Well, who, well someone had to 
put their hands on them. And who and then the bishops placed it on the other bishops. Ignatius of Antioch is the first bishop to call the Catholic Church Catholic. Yep. And we know it's Catholic in, in a pronoun sense because it's called the Catholic Church and it's pointed to in many circumstances that will persuade you to understand that. And if you can't, well, just ask me or whoever you want to ask. Who is a Catholic apologist? Who understands? Who can research? Who can give you a quotation? Well, what what other reasons do people leave the Catholic Church for? You can share with me on your post, um, but I uh, I think the like the the hardest reasons are because of the sins of the priests, the Pope, the sins of Cardinals, plenty of them. So were in the Middle Ages. So were in the Dark Ages. So were in the early church. The apostles weren't pure either. Jesus, again, Jesus called Peter, get behind me, you Satan. So if Jesus can call the first pope a Satan, To whom will you go? Where else is there to go? Folks, think. Where else is there to go? I also asked uh, my fellow Catholics, go to Mary. I wear this. Uh, this is a... It's called a miraculous medal, by the way. It comes from, you know, I, the story goes it comes from heaven. I'm trying to keep the light away from it, but basically, it, she appeared to a nun in 1830, I believe, and she told her, "Please make or ask to this medal to be made according to the way I stand and I'm pictured and." Hundreds, thousands of people were cured in that in those few decades after that was done. One man actually was cured. He was um, an atheist. Didn't believe in it, in Jesus at all. A man approached him and asked him, "Can you please put this on and say?" The Memorare, it's a prayer to Our Lady Mary. Prayer means talking to, okay, guys? Talking to. Some people just never understand, but that's okay, all right? So because of this, he had an experience, and his name was Ratis Bonne, R-A-T-I-S-B-O-N-N-E. Google him right now. R A T I S B O N N E. He and his brother became priests. Here is Mary, and she's standing on a serpent. And guess who that serpent represents? Satan. He's the crook. The guy behind me, you know, the guy behind Peter, get behind me, you Satan. See, Jesus wasn't really speaking to Peter. Peter, okay, he was talking to Satan. Get behind me, you Satan. He was looking through Peter. Because Jesus later goes on to say, I have prayed for you, Peter, that your faith may not fail. But of course it did. But he came back. So there's still hope for our Pope. Popes. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble here. There's still hope for our bishops, our cardinals. Let's not think naturally. Let's think supernaturally. Okay, folks? 
when you're in church, when you're at home, when you're in your room, when, wherever you are in, understand that there's a supernatural power within you. Jesus Christ, he's the, he's the one that founded the Catholic Church. Nobody else did. Peter didn't found it. Peter and the apostles were the cornerstones. They were the ones that were there that Jesus founded. He founded them. But Jesus founded them while find, founding the church. There's only one church. I'm attempting to think of uh, other possible situations that a reason a person a reasonable person can have to leave the Catholic Church and it's and, and it, it can go in circle the next one is doctrinal because you know what sins is one thing someone doing something like screwy like not going to visit my grandmother and give her the last rites that's pretty bad you're wondering why I'm, I'm still here Mano a mano with you. Now learn to forgive. Because I learned to forgive. And I didn't learn it myself. I sought supernatural power in God. Can't do it myself. You can't forgive yourself. You have to go back and you have to forgive those who have hurt you, who have done really evil things against you. You have to do it. If you don't, your hate for it is going to spill out to other people. It's going to keep spilling out. So I would encourage you to... Think about some of these things. And let me know if there's any doctrinal issues that you have problems with. Because many of the doctrinal issues and the biggest concerns I have are on the podcasts, on the YouTube channel that I have. Um, I encourage you to go there. I would really appreciate if you subscribe. It just lifts up the channel more and more people are able to view it. It helps. You're actually helping other people, I think, view it more. I think that's what it's all about. Um, and I will later transform this into a YouTube channel, so I'll have to delete it off. I'm sorry. And then you'll have to, you know, you just have, you know, it'll be there as a, like a part of the library there, but, or playlist. Um, but just getting back and just, thinking about other possibilities here that people leave the church. Mostly it's, mostly it's basic, all oh, people leave the church because of, you know, sister said that to me. Sister said, did this to me. Well, you know what? Mom did this to me. My brother did that to me. Am I going to leave them too? You're going to leave your family because they did something to you? Really? Come on. Who are you kidding? This is our family in heaven. They're not leaving us. Why are we leaving them? To whom shall we go? You, Jesus, have the words of everlasting life. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. Meaning, if you didn't understand what I said, that eating my flesh and blood is literal. After I even said, went back, this is Jesus, I'm paraphrasing, went back and said, amen, amen. And no, I've never said amen, amen. And followed up with something that wasn't that was symbolic. I said when I said amen, amen, and followed it up. I meant what I said, and I and I said what I meant. Unless you understood it in the spirit, 
you're not going to get it. You're not going to understand the Eucharist that I taught you, Jesus is saying. In John 6, 54, 52 earlier. Because you're only looking at the flesh. Cannibalism. That's what the early Romans thought about the Christians. That's what those Jews, Jewish believers, in the thousands thought about Jesus. This man is going to give us his flesh to eat. That's how they understood him. But Jesus didn't go back and say, whoa, whoa, I didn't mean it that way. I meant it like you guys believe in the Passover, blah, blah, blah. No. He said, he reiterated again. He said, amen, amen. That was it. No more discussion. Amen, amen. The flesh I will give is food for the world. My flesh is my food, he said. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And thousands of disciples left it. Just like that. They couldn't accept it. Well, how many do you think left during the Reformation because of that very teaching? Millions. Well, maybe not that many. Hundreds of thousands, perhaps. Maybe a few. Yeah, I would say so. Now, didn't that sow confusion? Isn't that what the devil wanted? The devil wanted that because Jesus promised. He said, he said, he said right there, the gates of hell will not prevail against it, meaning that they will try. And boy, have they tried. You think a possessed little girl on television and watching in a, a movie is, is the devil? You haven't seen the devil. The devil acts in priests, in bishops, in cardinals by just telling them not to do something. This, they're just... You know, or like us, you know, I mean, come on, we're, we're tempted, we give in to temptation. We sin too. Don't get us off, we, get, we can't take ourselves off the hook. I sin, you sin, priests sin. Of course, it's a little harder on the priests because <coughs> they're supposed to act in persona Christi, which means in the person of Jesus Christ. But they said, so to whom will you go? There's nowhere to go. There is nowhere else to go. So stop. Think. Get yourself one of these. And it will answer all of your questions. From the... First AD to the second AD, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, to the twenty-first AD. I hope this has helped you a little bit. I hope that you felt fed. <laughs> I know I hear that a lot sometimes. Think about it a little bit. Pray on it. Say the rosary, say the chaplet of divine mercy. I did a podcast on the chaplet, the divine mercy chaplet. Wish you a very happy Easter. I think we covered quite a bit. And um, I hope you really, really rethink and ponder. Those words, to whom shall you go?
Because if the Lord has the truth and he founded the church, which he did because in the Bible it says he did, Many instances. I'll, I'll get into it in the next segment. Then going somewhere else is it's like putting a little Band-Aid on your finger. I have a Band-Aid. I went to, went to the Coumadin Clinic today. I have a Band-Aid. See? Just ask yourself that question. To whom... Will you go? I know there isn't anywhere to go except, except one place. The place Jesus Christ founded, the Catholic Church. And he's given us also miraculous events to confirm that he is in this church, in the Catholic Church. He's given us miracles of the Eucharist. He's given us holy men. St. Padre Pio of Pietrelcina, Italy. Where are you going to find this? Where are you going to find this? You think you're going to find this in the local five and dime Bible church, which I respect because they teach Jesus. Wonderful. But then you have to ask yourself, what kind of Jesus? Jim Jones taught about Jesus. Three years later, he killed over 900 people. But he was, according to the Protestants, validly ordained. So to whom shall you go? To whom shall you go? Think about that, okay? And if you have anything you need, just ask. I'm as close as your post. <laughs> yeah, a little bit uh, smugly, sorry. So... God bless you. Happy Easter. I hope you have a nice and very holy, holy week. And I want to thank all our Protestant friends who have viewed this program because I love them all. They belong to the body of Christ, not visibly, spiritually. Okay. And that's good. I don't think they're going to return the favor to us, the Catholics, but all, not all of them maybe, but I, you know, certainly will tell you the, the way I, you know, what the Catholic Church believes. See, it's, the Catholic Church is not about a man. The Catholic Church is about divinity and a man. The Jesus Christ, both man and God. Wow, what a mystery. Whew, blew me away. Just think about it. Just thinking about it. Just, we need to realize sometimes that just because the local church, Catholic church because the local priest is doesn't mean that he can't bring the Holy Spirit down to this wafer and make it God food for your soul yeah the most darkest the most evil the most sinister priest you can ever meet can still bring you Jesus Christ. And no Protestant can do that. Sorry. They don't have the power of the keys, which Jesus Christ is going to respectfully request back. 
It is what it is. It's Christ Lexus, ultimately. We're just, the Pope is borrowing it. <laughs> All right, think of it that way. So, you know, I keep thinking I can finish, but there's always something that comes into my head. Maybe the Lord just keeps reminding me of things that I didn't already, that I didn't, that I may have forgotten. Hello, Agnes, Clayton, Sean, Bill, Bill Chib, Bill Chiverus. Oh, how cool! Um, me and him have a lot in common on the natural plane, maybe too, but more so anyway. But um, I want you all to just think about things a little bit. Because if you think someone else is going to give you a better understanding of Jesus Christ than the Catholic Church, the one that founded, was founded by Jesus Christ, historically, yeah, historically. Because you know what? I see that Bill is wearing a, or has a profile of a police badge, he can go into the encyclopedia and look up the first police officer of the United States of America. I can go into the encyclopedia and find out the first president of the United States. They must have taken the lead, took a lead from the popes because everyone has a succession. I can go back to Peter. You know, by bringing all the popes back to Peter. It doesn't matter. The, it's not about the man. It's about Jesus Christ. Well, I'll leave you with one last story. I just got to do it. St. Francis of Assisi. That's the man in the 13th century or 12th, I believe. I'm not sure. The people called him over because he was a very holy man. He had the stigmata, at least the first one we're familiar with. You know, that means the holes in, you know, the punctures of wounds in the feet, side, arms. There's a movie about him. You can look it up on Amazon, St. Francis of Assisi. I think it's 1961 or two, starring Dolores Hart. Look her up and you'll find it. I have her autograph. Um, they called him over because there was a priest living who lived a debaucherous lifestyle. And you know how people are. They just uh, like to gossip. We all, we all like to gossip, don't we? So they called him, you know, Brother Francis was a priest to, to, to do something about this priest. Wicked priest. Very The priest was scared to death. Oh. God. He was living with a with a mistress. Now, uh, come on. Living with a woman, a priest? Gee, I never thought that was possible. Really? <laughs> if you think you've seen it all, you haven't really, folks. You haven't lived in the 13th century. So, St. St. Francis of Assisi visits this priest knocks on the door the priest opens the door and is just red all over he knows who he's looking at you know the first thing that saint francis does he kneels before the priest takes his hands and kisses them and says it is through these hands that i receive the son of the living god by that very act the priest threw away his lifestyle and changed completely with that i want to leave you folks by telling you pray for the pope he really does need it Pray for your bishops. They really need it. Pray for your cardinals, your priests. They need it more.
We all need it. I need it. Bill needs it. Michael needs it. Clayton. All of us need it. We all need to be prayed for. But the faith is already preserved. Solid as a rock. Built on Peter. Through the revelation of Scripture. Don't let anybody tell you about Scripture. Not just anybody. Do you, you know what? I don't go to, when I, when I buy generic cereal, I don't even know if I, you know, I don't know what's, you know, I don't know by who it's made, but it's still good. So yeah, I mean, I, I go to Baptist churches, see what they're doing. They're great. Some of them are great. Some of them have better preachers than our priests. Because I, but I don't go to, I don't go to my Catholic faith for preaching. I go to receive the Eucharist. It is the bread of angels. The angels are envious of it. You're not going to find the bread of life anywhere else. If for any other reason to not leave the Catholic Church, don't leave it because the flesh I will give is my flesh. For the life of the world, Jesus Christ says. And you're not going to understand this teaching in the flesh, but in the spirit. That's how he ends it. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is of no avail. Those hundreds of thousands of disciples are long gone by the time he says that. It doesn't mean anything to them anymore. What he's talking about is to you and me and to the apostles. This is a spiritual teaching. It's not a teaching based on humanity or human flesh. It's based on supernatural teaching, supernatural faith. We all have to have supernatural faith or we're going to fall around like little petals, this all over the wind, anywhere. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you have a very nice, very holy, holy week next week. I encourage you to start the Divine Mercy Chaplet in two weeks on Good Friday and finish it up. Finish that novena on the following Sunday, which is the Feast of Sunday. That's the actually after the Sunday after Easter. It's a little confusing. But if you look up the Divine Mercy Chaplet, it'll tell you how to pray it. And also look up the Divine Mercy Novena. Because that is said starting on Good Friday through Saturday, Holy Saturday, through Easter, through Easter Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Easter Saturday, Easter Sunday, which is the Feast of Mercy. I encourage you all to offer it up every day for someone because... If you look up Divine Mercy Novena, you will find every day Jesus Christ himself gives you a reason to, to offer up for someone. There's also a day for priests and religious. Pray the rosary. Pray the chaplet of Divine Mercy. Pray the Divine Mercy Novena. Don't forget it. I'm going to remind you all on Good Friday. God bless you. God warm you. God love you. I wish I knew how to say that in, in Spanish, in her, Spanish, French, and Italian. Can't seem to figure that out. Next time, maybe. God be with you. Love you. Bye. For now.